The chassis swap begins, gentlemen. It is time. Last episode, I got the rear subframe completely swapped over to the other car. I got the engine transmission laying out here, so now it's time to move on to the front of the car. Initially, I thought the front subframe would be easier than the rear, but then I got to thinking, there's the front differential. There's the obvious things like brakes and suspension. There's also a lot of coolant stuff happening up there, so we'll see how this goes. I have a feeling this is gonna be more difficult than the rear. But there's only one way to find out. I've got a lot of work in front of me and a lot of work in front of me as far as laying on my back, rolling around on a creeper, and transferring parts from one chassis to the other. It's gonna be long and tedious, but I really wanna get everything underneath the car wrapped up, then send it to paint, and then move on to the more fun stuff like interior, wiring, body panels, stuff like that. Transferring the rear subframe wasn't too difficult, and I'm hoping the front goes just as smoothly. I don't really have any cause of concern with this swap, so I'm hoping in this episode I can get it all moved over to the new car and then basically have a rolling chassis. First up was removing the strut nuts up top. They're obviously very easy to get to and they're just three 15 millimeter nuts on each side. Once those are removed, it's time to move under the car where the real fun begins. I need these all around. Might as well take them off as a unit. Oh boy. Lots of coolant still in there. After seemingly getting everything underneath the car unbolted and ready to go, minus a few subframe bolts, it was time to move on to the wheel well. So I have brake lines to take care of each one. The coilover electronics cable needs to be disconnected. ABS wires disconnected. Brake pad wear sensors disconnected. Lintronic system, get that disconnected. Do that on the driver's side and then switch over to the passenger's side and do it all again. And then finally, it should be ready to pull the last of the subframe bolts out and get this thing lowered down. I had already removed the bolt that holds the steering shaft to the power steering rack. However, I needed to actually split that apart a little bit to loosen it up. And also there are two power steering lines that run all the way to the back of the car that are on the rack that needs to be disconnected as well. Kind of tricky to get to. They're an Allen head and you got to get in there with a couple wobbly extensions. Once I get that off, let the little bit of fluid drain. And then I moved around the car and found out that I missed some coolant hoses, two on each side, easy to disconnect. It's time to get some jacks under there, get this thing lowered.
moving game of what I missed oh boy <laughs> all right well that's out of there now well they're both out of there okay cool now I can really see hopefully the steering shaft comes off of there I think that's gonna be the main thing that I'm gonna struggle with looks like I gotta get this off all right let's try it again Steering shaft might be moving some. I don't see anything else holding us. This should be uh, should be coming out. That guy can just be set down the whole way. Holy crap, I didn't miss a thing. One thing in there, look at that. Nothing left over, no wires yanked out, wow. Good job, Matt. By the way, if you guys are in need of a really, really handy little flashlight, check out the IR2 Pro from Olight. What's really cool is it actually lifts up and it's USB-C to charge it. Like, how cool is that? All you do is twist it to turn it on low, and then twist it again for high. And it's uh, pretty bright. I'm just gonna throw it on the keys for the Porsche, or I always have a light with me. And I have a discount code in the link if you guys want to pick one of these up. Olay actually has a whole bunch of different offers where you can actually get one of these for free even. I know, I know, if you haven't already said it or thought it, I need one of those ATV jacks. I really want one. It's not the fact that I don't want to spend a few hundred bucks on one because it'd be well worth it. The problem is I just don't have any room in my garage to store it. Space is at a premium for sure. But that would have made this job and the engine and transmission job and the rear subframe easier for sure. Front cradle subframe suspension, everything is out the diff too. Uh, it wasn't as bad as what I thought. It took about as much time as the rear subframe, to be honest. So it wasn't terrible. But before I can put that in, I need to clean it obviously it's filthy and i need to get the gas tank out and maybe some other miscellaneous parts the gas tank shouldn't be too hard remember this very moment for later a couple connections on the top straps underneath clean it drag it over there put the gas tank up clean this front subframe drag it over there bolt that up that's the goal Years and years of this car sitting, especially in a body shop, has taken its toll on the subframe. It's full of dust, grime, dirt, grease, so it's time to get that cleaned up. But first, I need to get the gas tank out because I need to put the gas tank in the orange car before I swap in the subframe to the orange car because that goes underneath the gas tank. First step in removing the gas tank is disconnecting all of the connections up top. And to do that, I gotta remove these plastic bits covering it. You piece of Actually, the first step is not letting the hood fall on you. Twice. Ah, Freaking hood.
great is I have no idea how much gas is in this tank. This thing might come falling down, crashing on my head, but uh, I don't know, we'll find out. Can't be that bad, can't be that full. Doesn't feel that heavy. It is greasy though. Oh shoot, what holds it? It's unstrapped, yet it's not moving. I'm lost now. There's like a little clip up in there. Very interesting, because now, once that releases, the whole thing's gonna be like kaboom. And that does concern me, at least slightly. Ooh, there it is. Now we're still not moving. Turns out it wasn't moving for a multitude of reasons, but number one was that the fill neck was still in the gas tank, so. Oh, there we go. This just is a slide fit. Holy crap, that was exhausting. Yes, maybe. Sort of. My goodness, that's a tight fit. I struggled and struggled to get this gas tank out because it is such a tight fit. But what I actually needed to do, as silly as it sounds, was remove the fuel pump. Just those connectors sticking up at the top was enough to get the whole thing hung up in there. And even with that removed, it was still super tight to get it out. And then disaster struck. Oh, f I turned the camera off because it was taking so long to get the gas tank out and I was stuck, but eventually I did get it out. The problem was it fell, flipped on its side, and gas went everywhere. I immediately grabbed the hose and started hosing the whole garage fuller out because one spark in this whole house was going up in flames and taking everything with it. So I got it all hosed out and then I squeegeed the whole garage. Crisis averted. Well, that could have been, that could have been really bad. Full on hazmat situation. Probably a few gallons of gas spilled on the floor. I just, of course it didn't capture it on film, but it just, not good. No explosion, no fire. All good there. So now it's time to fully clean everything up. A couple of you guys asked about this red canister. I have a link for it below. It's from Amazon, eBay, etc. Basically, I just fill it with a degreaser, in this case, purple power. Take an air hose and you fill it up with air and push the button and now you have an easy to spray solution. I use this for cleaning all sorts of things, tools, gas tanks, Front suspensions, rear suspensions, you name it. Works really well. It's pretty cheap, too. This was also a good time to clean out whatever coolant or remnants of coolant that remained in these long tubes that run the whole length of the car. So I blew both of those out while here. It actually, everything that came out of there was pretty clean. I'll end up doing this with all the lines on the orange chassis.
Here I switched to the Tornado head attachment on the pressure washer just to get a little extra cleaning power. That tip works really, really well. You just have to be careful. Don't want to use it on paint. I did the whole front subframe twice and then I moved on to the front fender well. That thing was caked in mud, assuming from the crash. And then I also wanted to clean the front skid plate because it was just as dirty and muddy as that front fender well liner. Hitting everything twice really allows you to get in the nooks and crannies and do as good a job as I can with the tools that I have. Not striving for perfection, I just want it to be a lot better. Plus it makes installation easier when you're not getting covered in all this dirt, grease, and grime. For a quick scrub and pressure wash, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It's much, much cleaner than it was before. I wasn't chasing perfection, I just wanted it to be better because it was gross and covered in all sorts of grime. Now I just have to drag it over to the orange car and get ready for install. That's enough for one day. A couple days later, still, uh, still smells like gas in here. It's not good. And I've had this window open the whole time. I think it's gonna take a bit for the smell to go away. I did wanna show you guys the reason that this stuff's still sitting here. You look we obviously have some fuel lines here and we've got one here but not all well, the rest there's some evap stuff as well but that's not it this is the main concern this wiring right here so that's not on the orange car these tubes are these lines are i believe the power steering lines are on the orange car these aren't, so I need to transfer this guy to the orange car, that, I don't know if that's a charcoal canister or something, that to the orange car, that to the orange car. This may be there. This I need to transfer to the orange car. But the main thing is this wiring harness, so I don't know where this leads. Thankfully, it's just these two connectors, so I'm hoping that it's not too long. But I need to figure out where this goes and swap it to the orange car, because obviously I can't do this after <laughs> installing the gas tank. It has to be before. And I can't install the subframe until I install the gas tank. So round and round and round we go. It's an order of operations. I just simply ran out of time. So if you look underneath, the wiring harness is either down there underneath the brake booster or it's down there underneath all this crap. So that's what I need to dive into next before installing all of that. It's been a few days and it still smells like gas in here. Not good, but the front subframe is all out. The gas tank is out. Now it's time to move everything over. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to in this episode. I only had one day to work on the car this week. It was a busy week. So next episode, hopefully a lot more progress will be made. Thanks for watching guys. If you hadn't subscribed yet, consider doing so. We'll see you in the next video.